Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Well, isn't it a wonderful day? This is the day that we are able to create in our own power. We take our power back. Whatever we've given out that was not supposed to be given, we take it back and we begin to take accountability for the things that we do right and wrong. Isn't that something? So when we begin to talk about um, the power of change, you have it. You're looking at um, your position as a giver. Um, has your giving been good or has it been negative? You know what I'm saying? And you begin to look at it from the concept of truth. Truth means that, yes, we all have an idea of what truth is, but there is a truth that reigns from the principles of the universe, which means that thou shall not steal or kill or hurt uh, someone. And knowing these things, we know that we can do it physically, verbally, or mentally, right? And so if I have the power to change, that power to change means that I have the ability to look at the ill will and intention that I have displayed towards others um, over my life. Um, the ill will that maybe someone else projected towards me and I took on, maybe I was, you know, a child and something um, not so nice happened. Well, I have the power to take my life and recreate things the way that I want to, you know, see manifest in my life. Because in most cases, what's happening is, is that we took on a perception of what others have done. We grew up with it. And so we began to inflict or enforce those thoughts, feelings, um, and heartaches on others, right? So um, something that came to mind this morning when I was in my little quiet time, because I have to have it, I mean, that's what makes me a wonderful person. And I say it with conviction because I come from a mighty long way um, of being a hell raiser. And, you know, no one has to tell me that I've changed. I know without a shadow of a doubt I have. And that's what makes the difference in how I feel about me. So here, John 10 and 18 says, no man has power to take my life. I have authority to lay it down and to take it back up. And this is Christ. This is Jesus saying this. And to connect it, you know, Jesus told us, that greater works were in, were in us than those that were in the world. So we have to identify with how we're living. And yes, there may be some people out there that have not, you know, given their life to Christ or they tried it, but they may not have put their faith in it when the tough got tougher and the going got tougher. You understand? Because there's a pressure time. And that pressure point time is a testing to see if your will is going to stand against God or if you're going to release your will and come into your spiritual will, which is a connection with God. And this gives an um, understanding of what Christ is saying when you surrender your will. So here, Jesus is telling them that no man can take it. I have the power. And so all of those that follow Christ, not religion, not just saying scripture, they have the authority as well. They have the authority because they've been through the testing times, the proving of um, they, their faith in Christ. They've overcome and risen from the depths of hell, you see. And so authority comes from your experience through the process. Now, again, if you are someone that has behaviors where you display anger and rage, you have no self-discipline. You're passive aggress aggressive. So there's, you know, um, outburst, 
um, you're always angry within yourself. You know that, but you might show smile outside of yourself, happiness outside, but it's a false face. You see, the mask has been ruling the life, all right? If these are any of your areas you want to consider the alternative that you have in power because power as we see in society today or even as you know in what happened with George Floyd and you know some of uh, the things that happened last year with the aggression of militia out in the streets where people were marching for a cause of peace or actually to get what they um, are supposed to have out of life is one perception. But here we have another because there's a need for your spiritual man to balance out with your physical man. Your political leaders have... Um, a, a, a play in aggressive behavior or the lack of attending to the needs of the people that they work for, such as those that are um, in communities living in, you know, the city and state. I'm not talking about um, just in their sector. I'm talking about the people that they work with, such as you and I. And so the behavior is to look on to feel their pot, but never feel yours. So if you're looking for someone to feel your pot, you'll always be looking. If you're looking for someone to help you with anger and rage, you'll always be looking because you may be the one that has the answers about overcoming anger and rage or society issues. You may be the one that can teach others about society, meaning, you know, the undercurrent issues that allow people to believe they have no power unless someone is leading them and that someone is not leading them to victory, but they're leading them to, um, it's a deception. Yes. All right. So here, John 10 and 8 gives you an understanding of where Jesus was at. Because even in John 10, moving away from religion and actually applying this to your life every day, what happens is, is that you begin to practice something and you see that there's a truth there because you may have been practicing lack and it was true. But when you decide to change a lack mentality, then what happens is you take on wisdom and riches. Let me just get this straight, that there are a lot of people that believe that um, material things are their uh, support. Hello, is material speaking back to you? Uh, when you lose your mind or you have to go into a mental hospital, is material speaking for you? I don't hear nobody. If you have cancer, can that material take care of it? I'm going to keep on pressing that because once you have manifested material, you're going to have to learn how to manifest something else. Also, you have to learn how to manifest a good attitude because most materialistic people will be happy for a minute. But after the minute is gone, they're unhappy again. There is no substance. You see, substance is within yourself. That's where you got to go and do the work. Someone that's lazy, they don't want to work. They want to work for what makes them happy. And it could be that material. And you ask yourself, are you a greedy person? Because I see a lot of uh, people in uh, the United States, meaning our political leaders, that have been working out of greed. And you can see it because there's so many people suffering. And, you know, you got a lot of people out there that would say, well, it's, it's their fault because they didn't take the opportunity. You know what? It's not everybody's fault that they didn't take the opportunity because consciousness is different for everyone. That's why I'm here telling you that you have the power to change. And many people have spoken on what I'm speaking of, but it's my mouth. It's my voice. It's my confidence. And it's my courage that I'm pushing to influence others to believe in their self. You cannot have confidence 
through things. You can't have it through people. You got to have confidence for yourself. That means that you got to know where to go to get it and how to stand on it, right? And so the authority of power comes through exercise. You get up every day, even when it looks like you can't get out the bed. If you're sick, you know, if you, you're on the edge of losing things, your house, your car, know that there's the power of God within you that will make a way because no man and what no man has done and what no man uh, has done to you to hurt you or to keep you pressed down, they can't do it. You see, you've always had the power to lay it down and allow people to do things to you, right? To you, for the person out there that has been through domestic violence, molestation, so on and so forth. You went through hurt and pain, relationships never worked. Your profession hadn't paid you the way that it should and so on and so on. Guess what? You laid it down so that it could be. Now, what's the part of the lesson that you need to carry on? Learn it. Did you learn what you laid down, what you allowed? When you allowed someone to talk to you and you said nothing and they were coming out of their mouth sideways, what did you learn about yourself? Did you learn that you had the power to say nothing in a time where conflict could rise? Yes. Or did you learn that it was okay for someone to talk to you sideways? What did you learn? And when you answer that, you'll be at a place where you can actually take your life back or you will continue to allow others to assert their authority over you. Because here is what John 10 and 8 says again, I have the authority to lay my life down and to take it back up. So those that are in Christ have this ability. They have to practice what they look at and know where what they're looking at and experience goes. Because if it's garbage that someone is giving you, you know where to put that. If it's, you know, um, a blessing, someone is giving you a house, you know where to put it, right? If someone is talking to you um, nasty and, you know, they may not have discipline over the way that they talk. They just think, well, you should just understand me. No, You might understand, but they might be telling you something that you need to teach them. While you've been in a lesson with them and they've been talking sideways, the lesson may switch over if you get the lesson that you don't have to listen to people that are unaccountable for their actions and for their words towards you. No, you learn how to talk to me because I gave you the opportunity. You see, I laid it down. I gave you some time to understand who I am, but you didn't get it. And so now I take my life back and I began to work in other areas with other people. I began to move and shake with others, you see? Because I gave you time to understand that no one has to be beat up with your words because you're damaged. Get some help, right? That's what we all have to do. Or begin to pray and meditate, right? So this is where you begin to take your power back. So all of this is up to the individual. Um, You can email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. I love to hear, you know, what you have to say concerning the topics. Always on YouTube, I have um, podcasts on Shopify and on um, Anchor. Um, And I am also on Instagram, um, Interfaith Wealth Builders. We have a leadership group, um, women who are coming out 
and um, understanding their power and liberty to love themselves and to love others, right? So I will talk to you later, you guys. Be encouraged and um, pay attention to what you give and what you receive. Pay attention to what you give people, good and negative, because this is your harvest, good or negative. And, and what goes around comes around. And this is where we begin to look at the change. And so those that have been living in conditions that they don't really like, you got to really look at yourself and say, have I been living the truth if this is not what I like or what I love for myself? Because power means that I begin to love myself. Even in the worst of times, you begin to love yourself. But that is the number one key, loving you within. And that love begin to manifest outside of you because, you know, love is like a vibration. The more you say love, I love, I love, I love myself, the more you feel it, you sit in it with yourself and you begin to change you, empower you to rise. But in that rising, what happens is, is that the veil falls away from your eyes, the illusion that you didn't have the power, the illusion that it was okay for someone to talk to you in a way that is not respectful. The illusion falls away. Domestic violence, the illusion falls away. You find that you're not worthy of that anymore. You take back your power from someone that left you with scars of being raped or molested. You take it back and you say, oh, I'm not gonna live in those thoughts anymore. You see, I'm going to work on myself because I believe in who I am. So be blessed and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.